Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to Seminole State College's softball complex and the campus of Seminole State College. Game 8 will match the Seminole State College Trojans and the Western Oklahoma State College Pioneers. The Trojans will be the visitor on the scoreboard and the Western Oklahoma State Pioneers will be the home team. This is the starting lineup for the Signal State College Trojans. In center field, number 10, Karen Goodwin. At second base, number 2, Jerry Romine. The designated player, number 12, Haley Romine. The shortstop, number 14, Taylor Rowley. The left fielder, number 7, Karen Pritchett. The first base on number six, Emily Richardson. The third base on number 11, Sheila Parker. The catcher on number 30, Jacqueline Gray. The right field on number 22, Sonny Neal. In the circle and the flex player on number 35, Allie Rook. The starters for the home team, Western Oklahoma State College, Pioneers. At third base, number 11, Alexis Perry. All right. Getting ready for the number nine, game Alexis number Perry. eight. At catcher, number seven, Rosie Ward. At shortstop, number four, Marilyn Alvarado. The pitcher, number 33, Reagan Perry. Second baseman, number 23, Megan Beavers. Designated player, number 8, Kimberly McKee. Right fielder, number 2, Kristen Alcorn. First baseman, number 18, Corin Farrell. And the left fielder is the flex, number 15, Lacey Rowe. Ladies and gentlemen, before this game, to honor America, we'd ask you to please rise and join us as we hear the national anthem performed by Seminole State College biology instructor Karen Hernandez and her daughter Akia on this Mother's Day. Oh, say can you early light what so proudly we hail and the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for That was outstanding right there. National Anthem, game eight, I believe. The visitors for this game on a coin flip, Signal State Trojans, number one team in the country. 
versus Western Oklahoma State Pioneers. Let's see what we can do here. How's that uh, outside audio? You guys might let me know how that outside audio. I think the last game it was a little, a little, uh, a little loud. Um, turn it down just a little bit. You guys can let me know how that is. Hope you guys are enjoying, enjoying the broadcast today. We'll do our best. Bradshaw will be here just a little bit. She went down to the dugout. Watching for Malthus. Go, Lady Pioneers. Betty. Betty watching the game. <clears throat> On the mound for the Pioneers. Will be Parrish behind the plate. Ward at first. Farrell. Second base, Beavers. Shortstep, Alvarado. Third base, Perry, left field, Rowe, center fielder, Frazier, and right field, Alcorn. Coming to the plate for the Trojans, center fielder, Doobie. Taryn Dubler, sophomore from Asher, Oklahoma. She takes ball one. The last game, let's see, that's going to be a called strike. The last game, NEO win, was it 9-3? to three? Is that what it was, Rusty? 9-3. to three. So the winner of this game will play NEO. That ball's inside. Let me get my scoreboard going here for you. Two balls, one strike. It's going to be pop up to center field. Ball in play, fly ball, out. Frazier with the catch. Bringing up Romine, Jolie Romine, second base. Second baseman, Jolie Romine. For the Trojans. Swing and miss. Give you guys a rundown here in just a little bit on where we're setting that in the bracket wise. That ball's inside. One ball, one strike. Huh? Yeah, sounded real good. No, I did not. Get hold it down. There you go. So we got two balls, one strike. Romine. It's going to be a base hit to left field. Romine leads off the game with the hit, or uh, leads off the, her bat with a hit. Single left left field to row, bringing up uh, DP number 12, Haley Womack. Womack's out of Bixby, Oklahoma. She's a sophomore. I think she's an uh, all-region team. I'll pull that stuff up here in just a little bit. Got a called strike there. I know the Trojans are really anxious to play. They've been working on the fields for two days, three days, four days. That ball's hit to right field. Well hit. That could be out of here. Off the scoreboard for a home run. Making it two to zero. Right off the bat, Trojans taking the lead early. Two hits, two runs. One out here in the top of the first. Way to go, Haley. <laughs> now coming to the plate, 14, number, uh, shortstop number 14. Tata Riley out of Wichita, Kansas. She's a freshman. Taking a ball right there. Ball one. Again, you guys might let us know how we look and sound. Uh, we don't have a, any idea unless you guys let us know. 
So Womack hits a two-run bomb to right field off the scoreboard. There's a ball that's high. Three balls, no strikes. What's up? She draws a walk, ball four. He'll have to get on the PA and do it. With a walk. Bringing up left fielder, number seven, Taryn Pritchett, sophomore utility player out of Palmer, Oklahoma. Those are two cars that are blocking traffic to people can't people that illegally parked in the grass can't get out because these people park properly there's a ball get the one ball no strikes here in the top of the first Trojans up 2-0 early on Western Pioneers another ball two balls no strikes Raleigh, Rally is on first due to a walk, four consecutive pitches. There's a swing and miss, man. That was a, she, if she got a hold of that, that hit the school. She had a cut on that one. There's another foul ball. Two balls, two strikes to Pritchett. On deck for the Trojans, Emily Richardson, number six, first baseman. That ball's down. Three balls, two strikes. Looks like coach is going to call a timeout here. If you were younger in the five seven A, look at that number, H two K three one four. Or a shoe tomorrow, dark gray, with a tough donation plate O O six three. Some folks are asking you if you would help by moving your vehicles to allow them to exit. There's the pitch. There's another foul ball. A little bit about how we got here. Another foul ball. So Seminole in let's see in game one, Seminole beat Western or uh, Carl Albert. Western beat Carl Albert three to two. In game two, NEO beat Eastern seven to three. Game three. There's ball four. She draws a walk, so we got two on. With walks. Bringing up first baseman number six, Richardson. Uh, let's see. Tonkawal beat Rose in game four, six to one. Carl Albert beat Connors three to two in game five. There's a called strike to Richardson. Game six. Eastern beat Rose. Rose is eliminated. That game was suspended from last Friday. Resumed it today. They played about 12 minutes. There's a base hit to left field. One hopper to Rowe. She gets it in quickly. Bringing up third baseman, Shayla Harper, number 11. And then Eastern, Northeastern beat Tonkawal 9-3 in the game prior to this. So Eastern will play the winner of Western and Seminole, the current game. That ball's, oh, we call a strike on that. Look a little inside. We'll live with it, though. Jack Gray is on deck for 
the Trojans. We got 40 people watching. We need to get about 100 on there. Y'all, y'all share the share the feed. That ball's inside. Oh, he, should, he called that a strike. So we got 0 and 2 to count to Harper. Harper plays third base. That ball's popped up. Could be trouble. Alvarado makes making the catch. But shortstop. Bringing up Jacqueline Gray. Sonny Mealy's on deck for the Trojans. We got bases loaded right here. Jack can put it out of here, I promise you that. That ball's inside. One ball, no strikes. Jacqueline Gray, sophomore out of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Swing and miss. One and one to count. Two outs here at the top of the first. Lomack with a two-run bomb off the scoreboard. Ball inside. Two balls, one strike. We've got 46 people watching. That's good. Need to get it up to about 100. That ball is high. Three balls, one strike. Number one team in the country playing right here in JCAA. Signal State Trojans. That ball is inside. Making it three to zero. And the Trojans are going to bat around here in the top of the first. Coach Flores is going to make a change down there. We're going to have a pinch pinch hitter. Josie Sparks is going to hit for Sonny Mealy. Josie Sparks, uh, about three weeks ago, was the National Player of the Week for NJCAA. She had five home runs, four of them in consecutive bats. So she definitely has the power. That ball's down. I can understand why she made the change right now. Sonny's more of a slap hitter, and Josie... She can get four RBIs right here. Swing and miss, man. She had a cut right there. Josie Sparks, number 70 at the plate. That ball's down. Two balls, one strike to Sparks. Parrish on the mound for the Pioneers. Come on, Josie, get you one right here. That ball's in the, uh, on the inside for the 3-1 to count. Ward's going to call timeout and have a visit. You guys might let us know how we look and sound. Hey, Brian, how you doing? How we sound, Brian? Is the outside audio too loud? So back to action, 3-1 three, three to count. Trojans up 3 to Three to zero. Womack with a two-run bomb, and then uh, they have a walk. Bases loaded. That's there's another walk, making it four to zero. So Sonny's going to come back in. Mealy. Mealy's going to come in. So that burn sparks for the game. No. She can re enter one more time. Okay. I'm a baseball guy. I'm going to be honest with you. Dubler coming to the plate. So that's. Uh, 
That's about eight or nine balls in a row. There's a, there's a hit up to shortstop. Alvarado making the play. So we're going to go to the bottom of the first. Trojans up four to zero early. And we'll be back here in just a moment. You're watching the number one team in the country, Seminole State Trojans. We'll be back. We're back in the bottom of the first for the Trojans. You got uh, Lewis on the mound, Gray behind the plate, Richardson at first, Romine at second, Rowley at short, Harper at third, Pritchett in left, Dubler in center, and Mealy in right. Coming to the plate for the Pioneers is third baseman, number 11, Perry. Alexis Perry, freshman utility player out of Mangum, Oklahoma. Western has an overall record of 21 and 25. This is all prior to uh, this is going to be as of last Monday. Conference record of 13 and 19. Balls outside. Thank you. Ball two. There we go. Called strike right there. Yeah, Miss Bradshaw is going to come back up here and help. She did a great job in the first game. I had to go to the wards assembly. There we go. Three balls, one strike. To Perry. It's going to be a foul ball right field. I adjusted the outside volume a little bit, so hopefully it's uh, pretty good. Yeah. You want, you want that? Yep. You can go over that with him. We'll fill that, figure out what our role is. Perry's up the plate. All right, we got number 11, Alexis Perry. She is a freshman utility from Mangum. Mangum. Mangum, Oklahoma. It's going to be a ball. Hit to Richardson for easy, easy out. Have you uh, read over Western's overall statistics? Hey, take, take at it. Go, go do whatever you want. I'll All manage right. the board here. Right now, we got number nine, Justice Frazier, up to bat. She's a center fielder. She's a sophomore outfield from Morris, Oklahoma. That first pitch is going to be a strike right on the outside corner. And Western Oklahoma State Colleges overall. They have overall 21 wins and 25 losses, 13 wins and 19 losses in conference, 235 runs, a total batting average of 322, on base percentage of 378, slugging percentage of 472, and 34 home runs. Their mascot is the Pioneers. Pioneers, there's a ball. One ball, two strikes to Frazier. A lot of people here today. Oh, yeah. A lot of people. I'm still trying to catch my breath. I was down in the <laughs> dugout, and that energy level's out of the, out of the ballpark. You know, we could actually, like if you had your phone, 
we can connect up and we can pull your feet in from the dugout. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't never done it, but I know it's possible. Two balls, two strikes, or one ball, two strikes. She is fouling a lot of them off to the right side, the first base side. So. Give Dom the fastball. Mm-hmm. We're actually doing our rotation where we have a. Um, Taryn Dubler coming up right by second. Swing and miss for the strikeout. Woo-hoo. For the second out, bringing up catcher number seven, Ward. Ball's going to be hit. That's a well ball hit to center field. One hops the wall. Just underneath the 210 side. We got a plate second base. Uh, not in time. Good throw by Taryn Pritchett. Yeah. Does scare me a little bit, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so Ward gets a double, bringing up number four, sharp shortstop, Alvarado. All right, number four, Marilyn Alvarado. She is a freshman. Uh, she plays infield from Athens, Texas. I'm really bad at pronouncing things. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Athens. 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 Al- uh, Alvarado, she uh, made Region 2, all Region team. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I uh, read off the list in the last game. Ball went outside. Liz Womack, she's not here. Watching the line, there's a strike right there. One ball, one strike. Lewis has thrown 15 pitches so far. Hey, it was a home run when Trojans were hitting. That must oh be that birthday goodness. power. Yeah. It's her birthday. So. Cold strike. Yeah, one ball, two strikes, and two outs. I didn't see it. Was it close? Well, Ron Anderson said, can't video from the dugout. It's been slow. Oh. That yep. would make sense. Got to keep us in line. Now, is that for the home side or either side? Okay. That one's going to be a ball, probably low. We don't want to We don't want to violate any rules. Mm-mm. You were, um, We could do it from the stands, though. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Could just get really close to it. Yeah. There's a foul ball. <laughs> can you take fit, can you take uh, photos from the dugout? Can Ron, anybody you seem to know a little more than we do? Yeah. So can we take uh, pictures from down there? Or? There's going to be a ball. Oh, just foul ball. I guess I need to read a rule book because if we make a flight up north, I'll have to abide by all the rules. Well, you got to. So here we go, full count, two outs to Alvarado, shortstop. He's batting in the four hole. Get the award at second base with a deep with a double. Close pitch. Yep. That puts her at first, and we have number seven, Ward, at second. Bringing number 33, Reagan Parrish, the pitcher up the bat. She is a sophomore pitcher slash utility from Huntington, Texas. Nice pitch. It's going to be a cool strike, and we're going to try and get the attempt to pick off at first. I know Jack, Jack behind the plate, she's not afraid to throw the ball room. Mm-mm. We got first and second base, Alvarado with a walk and Ward on second base with a double. That's going to be a close pitch. Mm-hmm. One and one to count, two outs here at the bottom of the first. wonder what they're talking about there. Hey, that was a strike. Come on, just keep throwing it there. He'll call it. Yeah. You got to get out of here. We're not going to talk bad about it. We got the, the uh, waiting for the next game umpire in the press box with us. He says, I got to get out of here. Yeah, it's crazy. 
There's a foul ball into the dugout. Not bad, though. Got to have fun at it. Huh? Yeah. Uh, this is actually what we've pretty much done the entire, like, uh, spring because... Ooh, she almost went for that one. You talking about our live stream? How we have, how we bring Doobie in? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of looks for it, but hey, if you can pull it on Lewis, you deserve a base hit. Not very many people are going to pull it. Gonna That's going to be an E six. six. Yes. Ball in play. Grand ball. E six. So Western's on to something here. Bases loaded, two outs. Bringing up second baseman, number 23, Beavers. You got two outs, any base. Called strike. You know, I wouldn't even pay any attention to how we were defensively lined up. But. That's going to be a base hit. Ball's coming into the plate. Nice throw. Beavers gets a base hit, scored a run, making it four to one. Nobody turn, get you there. I think that was the one spot that it could have gone. Hey, I, I mean. Other than the hole, you know, just open left field. When you have a power pitcher like that, you know, you get a lot of blue pits. Yeah. You know, she barely got around on that. Sometimes it works. Bringing up uh, number eight, McKee. I have her. That ball's hit right back to Lewis. Gets it over to first base for the out. And that's going to end the first inning. Trojans four, Western one. Ball in play. Ground ball out at first. Lewis to Richardson. Western uh, one run, two hits, one error on 29 pitches. Seminole will send up Romine, Womack, and Rowley. We'll back here in just a minute. You're watching number one team in the country, Seminole State Trojans. We're back here in just a moment. Welcome back. We'll go to the top of the second. Trojans up four to one. Romine, second baseman is going to she she singled a ground ball to left field her first time up. <laughs> is that a ball? That's a ball. That's a line drive hit. It's going to be a two hopper off the wall. She's going to get a stand up double. Man, she hit that ball hard. Romine with the double, bringing up Womack. She bounced one off the scoreboard her first time up. Enid beat Redlands 12 to 11, so they have an if game for Division II baseball. The 
Ball one, high and outside, a little off speed right there. Did we get a final on the Trojans baseball game? It wasn't good, I know that. There's a ball outside. She's going to advance on a wild pitch, Rusty. Excuse me. Three and zero the count. Romine at third base got a leadoff double and advance on a wild pitch. Ball four. No outs here. Bring it up. Shortstop number fourteen, Taylor Raleigh. Coach is going to come out and have a talk. We'll be back here in just a second. You're watching Trojan Softball. We're back. Conference is over with. Womack at first on a walk. Romine at third on a double and a pass ball. Sorry. You're right. That ball is way high and outside. Womack's going to advance on a wild pitch. you got to be careful with that backstop. If it hits the net, it, uh, it'll drop right there. But if it hits that backstop, it'll bounce back pretty quick. It's home field advantage. Mm -hmm. Two balls, no strikes. Winner of this game will play at 9 o'clock tonight. Come out and watch the sunset with us. There's a strike right there. Two balls, one strike. A little disappointed. We only have 40 pe people watching, but we probably have, I don't know, 300 people here? Oh, yeah. 400 people here? There's a lot. We got, they're surrounded the press box, too. It's going to be a ball. Three, three balls, balls, one strike. Yep. Everyone to count. You guys might let us know how we look and sound. Give us a little thumbs up with the emojis or in the comments. Anything would be greatly appreciated. And a large supreme pizza from Pizza Hut would be good. Yes. Especially <laughs> that or pepperoni calzone, Mazios. Yeah. Glenn's blood sugar is getting a little low. we gotta, we got to get him some pizza in here. We had uh, NEO, a guy, one of the dads. It's going to be called strike three. Now you hate that. you got to put the ball in play. Try to protect with two strikes. You don't uh, – no. I don't know if you heard this when I was uh, doing the other game when you weren't here, but when you got two strikes, you can't be so vulnerable. Don't let the umpire decide what is and yep. isn't a strike. That's right. Pritchett coming up to the plate. She pops that one up. I think she popped up the first one. That's going to get out of play. Yep. No, she walked her first time. Right? Yes. We had about uh, four walks in a row, I believe. Yeah, you did good. Uh, you had the, the music playing in between innings. You had the tarp, the tarp video going. Yeah, I kept letting everyone know. I was like, guys, this is my first time doing it solo. Yeah, I had to go to an awards assembly, so I'm back now for the day. Tomorrow's a different story. You may be on your own tomorrow. I can do it. Ball inside. <laughs> All right, we got one and one on the count. One out, runners on third and second. Crazy little pitch there. Ball high. Two balls, one strike. One out. Two on. It's amazing how much I've learned from being up here. I mean, just watching these pitchers' I, hands, yeah. you can see it so open. Oh, yeah. There's another foul ball. It's just under it. This is a part of the about where you have that mentality mindset. Something not everyone has. You just got to work on it. Yep. That's going to get to the net. Call it off. Stay alive. 
Parrish still on the mound for the Pioneers. Ward behind the plate. Farrell at first. Beavers at second. Alvarado at short. Perry at third. Rowan left. Frazier in center. And Alcorn in right. Swing and miss for the second strikeout of the inning. That's not good. It is not. But she went down swinging. Mm -hmm. She had about, what, three foul balls? Four? Yeah. Something yep. like that. I mean. Emily Richardson coming up. She's singling a ground ball to left field. It's going to be a fly ball. Hits a shallow left. Alvarado with the catch. The Trojans threaten. But don't score. We go to the bottom of the second. No runs, one hit on 18 pitches. Coming up for the Pioneers, Alcorn, Farrell, and Rowe. We'll be back. Who's the flex? Uh, oh. <laughs> Western right there. Oh, shoot. Gonna try and bunt it. It's going to be a ball. So she is the DP. And then Sam Flex. Row. I think I can set her out. And that's going to be a strike right on the outside corner. Yeah, my bad. I looked at it. No, I thought fine. it all looked good. There we go. Two and two from count. And that's going to be. Ball three. <clears throat> three and two the count. How do you call? How do you do that <laughs> on Game Changer? Ball in play. I just I would always drag her name up and okay. put it to infield. You know what I mean? Yeah, just yeah. Drag it. Down at first. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, bringing up Farrell, first base, number eighteen. And uh, Brian Nelson said Coach that. Coach Nelson. Oh, he uh, went ahead and said that Connors last tweeted thirty minutes ago that they led Seminole. 19 to 11 in the seventh. Must be for baseball. Yeah, I'd, I'd seen it wasn't pretty. That's a high scoring game. That's a high scoring game. We actually started uh, watching it when we all met uh, over in the dorms, and Connor's got ahead on them pretty far. Yeah, I think they were up uh, 5 0 in the top of the first. Mm -hmm. They jumped on them early. It's going to be a ball outside. Well, I heard that. Uh, they, uh, they're running out of pitchers. Everyone's getting sore. And yep. So. Oh, 
That's going to be an out. Line drive to Taylor Rowley. Johnson catches it. It's going to be out number two. Great play by 14. And uh, if you guys have any concerns, questions, comments uh, about the bracket, Kenneth is going to know more about the bracket than me, but, you know, go ahead and comment. I have my laptop open, so we'll be able to see them, and we'll do our best to answer them. It's going to be a foul ball. So the way the – We're doing Game Changer, and we have the brackets on turning machine. It's going to be a strike. Yep. Strike number two. Yeah, sorry about, um, you know, our bracket is just going crazy with all this weather and rain and postponements. Oh, yeah. Post, what is it? Postponements, right? Uh, yeah, postpone. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so in this game, this is game eight, Seminole and Western. They will play, the winner of this game will play NEO at 9, at nine o'clock tonight. The game after this one, the 5 p.m. game is going to be Carl Albert and Tonka Wall. They're in, in a uh, winner take all, loser goes home. And then at 7 o'clock, the loser of this game will play Eastern. So that's your bracket update. One thing about uh, Allie's pitches that are great is, you know, she throws so fast that they just naturally rise. Yeah. Good job, right there. So that's something we always, you know. The thing, about, the thing that I've learned about Seminole this year is that, I mean, if you look at the standings for the pitching leaders for the conference or the region, I mean, we have a low ERA, but we have, you know, we don't have that one pitcher that's thrown you know, 90% of all the games. Yep. You've got about four or five different pitchers, and they, they all throw equally. Yeah. And we're young, too. We've got pitchers coming back next year. Yeah, three of them. Three of our four. Another foul ball. Allie is the only sophomore pitcher. So. Okay, so where's everybody? Any t Tell us the girls that are going places after this, for all sure. All right. Um, I don't know all the places. I know that Emily Richardson, the first baseman, she's going to OBU. There's going to be a fly ball hit the right field. Ooh, Sonny's always got to make it look good. Woo. Ball in play. I seen her practice one day, and she was diving all over the place. Yeah. So we'll go to the top of the third. No runs, no hits, no errors on 16 pitches. Coming up for the Trojans, Harper, Gray, and Mealy. We'll be back here in just a minute. Or you can keep talking. Actually, we're back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of just give some information on uh, Seminole just because, you know, I play there, so I know all the players like my family. They are my family. All right, so we have one of our pitchers. She's a freshman, Cheyenne Edding. She'll be coming back. And then uh, Jolie Romine, she is our second baseman for this game. She is from Davis, Oklahoma. She's going to be going to USAO. And she'll tell you Oklahoma. she's from Davis. Just mm -hmm. ask her. She yeah. loves representing Davis. <laughs> And uh, let's see, Emily Richardson, the first baseman, I had said that. She is going to OBU, I believe. And um, let's see, Taryn Dubler, she is a sophomore. She is, I believe she's undecided right now. Um, not really sure about that. Um, Shayla Harper, our third baseman, she's a freshman. She's amazing. She's a freshman. Haley Womack, not sure where she's going, but she is a sophomore. She is our uh, DP, plays some outfield. Taylor Rowley is a freshman, our shortstop. <coughs> Hunter White, she's a sophomore. Um, not sure where she's going. Let's see. Natalie, she is one of our pitchers. She is a sophomore. Do not know about her. And Sunny Mealy, our right fielder. She is going to USAO as well with Julie. Our catcher, Jacqueline Gray, is a sophomore. First one's going to be a ball. Got uh, Harper coming to the plate, third baseman number 11 for the Trojans. She flied out to shortstop her first time up. There's a called strike. Allie Lewis, uh, our pitcher that is pitching this game, she is uh, OC, OCU, I believe, Oklahoma Christian University. That's about it. Ball hit over to Alvarado. It's going to be 
Put the out. And I didn't name everybody. Um, mainly just all the sophomores kind of go down the list. All right. Jacqueline Gray's coming to the plate. Jacqueline Gray. Number 30. <laughs> she walked her first time up. This what? is their the lineup where they got uh, like three or four walks in a row. Yeah. Well, you give up you give up a ball to the off the scoreboard, you kind of get a little shell shock. Yeah. There's another ball, ball two. And it uh, looks like we are going to have Sunny Mealy coming up to bat instead of Josie. Josie had to come in. Yeah. Of course, Sunny's last at bat. Yeah. It's going to be ball number three. It's going to be high. Yeah, but you you got to put you got to put uh, sparks in her in that situation. When the base is loaded. She could, she could hit it out. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Sunny's more of a slap hitter. Mm -hmm. Going to put Jacqueline Gray on first. Put Sunny Mealy up to bat. And Sunny is our lefty. So. Haley's Haley's going to uh, Roger State. Mm -hmm. Haley Womack, Roger, she's going to Roger State. Strike. Yeah, Haley had a nice little uh, birthday hit earlier. So yep. that's our birthday present from the softball gods. <laughs> this time was 20 again, or 18, or 19, whatever she is. Turning 20. <laughs> Turning 20. Attempted throw down. Second baseman's going to bobble it just a little bit. No advancements. So we got one strike. Was that a? Two strikes. Two strikes. My apologies. No one to the count. Someone's got four runs, four hits. Pioneers got one run, two hits. Ball outside. So Sunny's the only only player that I've seen play that she's running towards the pitcher when she hits the ball. Everybody else is power hitters. Yeah. We have a couple lefties, but she's the only one that really slaps. So. She's really fast. Mm -hmm. Doobie's on deck for the Trojans. It's going to be ball number two. Ah, you can see that movement on that ball, too, from up here. Yep. Called strike three. It's going to be two outs. Bringing up leadoff, Taryn Dubler up to bat. Parrish has got three strikeouts on the Trojans, and two of them were looking. One of them was swinging, I remember that. Yep. It was a turn pitch. First pitch is going to be a ball low and inside. Ball low and inside. You can kind of see how these at bats are kind of affecting that dugout. Yep. How does the outside audio sound? Yes, and let us know. We can't hear, it, but we know it's on. Hit by pitch. Gray at second. Doobie at, at first. Romine coming to the plate. She singled on the ground ball left field and doubled on a line drive left field. She's batting in the two hole. That ball's high. Not too late to get out here. We got a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, games left. And uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh, that's foul. Oh, that's foul. Golly. Wait it back. Half a second. I would have hit a car on the freeway. But uh, like Kenneth was saying, I mean, hey, today is the first May day we've had. I mean, everything else has been like August ugh, weather. So. There's a base hit up the middle. Frazier going to come up with the throw to the plate. They cut it off. Parrish cuts it off. Hey, we got two outs from the Haley Walmart. Oh, my goodness. She's already hit one off the scoreboard. 
And now she's got bases loaded, so she hit a two run. Yeah, knock on wood. She can be like the young lady from Arkansas that hit home runs for the cycle. Did you see that? Uh uh-uh. uh. It's about a month ago. She had a one run home run, a two run home run, a four run or three run home run. And a grand slam. Yeah, yeah, my my heart oh, wow. stopped. And a grand slam all in one game. She hit the cycle in home runs. All right. For uh, Arizona or for Arkansas. Yeah. Speaking of the weather earlier, though, I'm going to go ahead and show you all this video of what our field has been like. And, um, you know, this is why we've been postponing games and canceling games. You know, we had at least, I came out here yesterday, we had at least 80 people out here on the field helping us. And, I mean, it ranged from. Uh, players from other sports. Uh, we had almost all the parents that live nearby helping and coaches from other sports. You know, everyone was out here helping, and that's yep. the reason that we're playing today. The whole community pulled together to get the field ready. Oh, yeah. We need turf. <laughs> That'd be nice. I know you don't like playing on yeah, turf. Not we, ta- me. we already talked about that. There's ball one. I'm a traditional gal, I guess you could say. But I like grass. It sure as heck would have come in handy. Yeah. You know, we put the tarps down. We put tarps on the outfield, the infield, but, you know, that water just really wanted to get under the tarp. Yeah. So. Water, the ground's so saturated, it just comes up from the bottom. Mm-hmm. Two balls, no strikes to Womack. Ball three. Is she going to get the green light here? I sure hope so. Three balls, no strikes. Two outs here in the top of the third. It's going to be a strike right oh, down in the middle. Swing and miss. It's a good swing. Just swing yep. in the middle of it. 3 2 count. Base is loaded. We're going to be going on the pitch. She's going to crush it right here. Popped it up. <clears throat> Farrell's going to make the play at first base. So Western has weathered the storm a little bit. No runs, one hit, no errors on 24 pitches. Coming up for Western Oklahoma State College, Frazier, Ward, and Alvarado. got uh, Frazier coming to the plate, center fielder, number nine. She struck out swinging. It's going to be a ball outside for the first pitch. Ball two. And the Trojans setting up with three infielders on the right side. Nobody's in left field. Hold straight. That's, I think that was generous of him there. <clears throat> you got to be able to hit your spots when you don't have a left fielder. You got to keep on the out, outer half of the plate. And they're not getting around on him very well either. I think we've had that 
one that got around, hit it to rally with the yep. air. Maybe that ball. Well, we had the we had the line drive to uh, Taren. Taren it yeah. short, and then we had the little blue pit to right field. She barely got around on that. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Here in the bottom of the third, Trojans up four to one. There's going to be a ball hit the second for the out. The Doobie bringing up Ward, number seven, catcher. She doubled on a fly ball to right field. Lewis probably wants to get back at her. Ooh, Hitting the spot. I say that was that was right on that outside corner. Hitting the spot. It's gonna be a she gonna catch that one? No. Foul ball. I wouldn't put it past her. She's like an acrobatic player out there. Oh and two the count. I mean no matter what it is, if we're out here practicing in forty degree weather or it's pouring rain, she is she is diving. She is everything. Great work ethic. Another foul ball. There's no chance at that one. That hits off the building out there. Oh and two the count will reset. Winner of this plays at 9 o'clock tonight. We'd love to see you guys at it. We're hoping Seminole's in that game. Keeping the faith. But the winner of this game will play NEO. Um, if you look at the, the uh, history of Region 2, it's going to be another foul ball. Seminole won the region last year. And... See, for the, I think for the past six years, Seminoles won it twice and NEOs won it four or five times. So it's been a predominantly NEO dominated. Swing and miss. Press it out. Sorry, Kenneth. No, you're fine. It's been predominantly dominated by NEO, but Seminole has just come out of, you know. Underdog. <laughs> Coach Flores has got him going the right way. Alvarado coming to the plate, shortstop number four. She walked her first time up. Takes great players, but it also takes a great coach. Takes a great coach. She takes is. players that are bought in. It'll be a foul ball. And I said it a couple games ago. I'll say it again. Best coach I've ever had. Connors defeated Simino 21-15. Simino is eliminated from the baseball tournament. I mean, they're heading back. You got uh, so Connors is going to play NEO in the championship game this evening at seven. Connors pop up. pop up for the third out, and we're going to go to the top of the fourth. Uh, no runs, no hits, no errors on thirteen pitches. Coming to the plate, uh, Raleigh, Rowley, Rally, Rally. Golly, I'd never. Get you can never right. get that one. Pritchett and Richardson. Raleigh. Raleigh. 
Rowley. Rowley. Golly, I can't. I can't. I don't do that on purpose. Swing and miss. She walked and struck out looking. <coughs> ball. Ball high. One to one to count. You got, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but Eastern's out there in right field watching from the seats. Foul ball. Coach, Coach Flo at first and Coach Flores. Third, there's a foul ball. And we got Rusty on the PA and we got Brother Glenn on the scoreboard. It's actually kind of fun doing this, isn't it? Yeah. There's the fly ball, hit the center field. She oh. makes a diving catch. Frazier with a good catch out there. That was a good catch. Got to give her props for that yeah. one. I mean, Western weathered the storm so far. Taryn Pritchard, left fielder number seven, come to the plate. She walked and struck out swinging. Last inning, we had two on. We had two on, no outs, and we had a, two strikeouts. The good thing is this is not an elimination game. There's a pop-up. It's pretty high. You I, say a, on that one. I say a pop-up, but. It's going to be two outs. Alvarado making the catch in the circle. She kills me that, you know, we had that one inning. Yeah. I mean. Emily singled on the ground ball to left and flied out to short. Called strike there. And foul ball off to the left side. I don't know what the stats are, but I would say you could count on less than your ten fingers our players watching third strike go by. Yep. That doesn't happen very often. There's a foul ball. They're going to get their money's worth at the plate. And there's a lot of people here. That's good to see a turnout like that. Ball's outside. Two ball, or one ball, two strikes. so hard throughout the season so that you can host and yeah. that way everyone get everything ready it's awesome be nice to be able to have this every year here the three region tournament mm-hmm. yeah I think it'd be really if we had turf it'd make it so much there's a line drive hit there we go it's a base hit Start of the reach Alvarado Hard hit, too. Mm-hmm. It's going to bring up number 11, Shayla Harper. So they fly, she flew out to short and grounded out to short. She's 0 for 2. Parrish has thrown 95 pitches through four to two thirds in. Oh, wow. That's a lot more than I would have expected. Foul ball. Of course, it's not like baseball. Yeah. They say that you can throw a softball all day long. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't need you, Siri. Um, I was actually talking to my friend because uh, one of her friends plays on the baseball team. And like my little brother, he plays baseball as well. When you get to about 200 pitches in a game, isn't that about time where you got to like – because it's not in baseball? Motion? Yeah. Oh, no. When you get up in the high 80s, 90s, it's about time to come home. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. 200. The high school rule is you cannot start a new batter with more, with 120 pitches. Okay, that used, might be one it used not to be uh, used not to be a rule until people kept getting hurt. Well, they don't throw them. You know, I mean, with all the just like with concussions, you got more studies, and so they're finding out a good legitimate pitch count. Yeah. And high school coaches, some of them were 
throwing, letting a kid throw 140, 150, 160 pitches, and it's just not good on their arm. Yeah, that's why I worry about my little brother because he's a pitcher. And uh, I, I might have seen him play. What team? What age? Uh, he is a sophomore in high school sophomore. right now. What high school? Uh, sophomore. Sophomore. Oh, that's a foul ball. Uh, he goes to. Uh, he gets lessons um, from a uh, skip at OU. Yep. He'll go up there and get some lessons up there. Yep. I wish they were. He overworks it. So, but we have the state championship deals in the state championship game tomorrow. There's another foul ball. At noon versus Silo, Dale versus Silo at noon in Shawnee High School. So I, I got to be there, so you may be on your own. That's okay. Some people said they like me. I'm, so, I'm sure some of them are like, oh, I'd rather what's listen, this 18-year-old doing? I'd rather listen to you than me. <laughs> another foul ball. One ball, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the four. Trojans up four to one. That's some good compliments there. They were like, you're doing so good for your first time. I was like, Thank you. I really needed to hear that. It would be nice if we had a class like this where we could have teach people how to do this. Yeah. Not in time over there. Two and two to count. Richardson back. Attempted pick off over at first. All right, and just a little recap. We are in the top of the fourth. We have two outs, two balls, two strikes. And Shayla Harper is up to bat. Trojans are leading four to one. Yeah, turn on that one. Full count. Emily's going to be off to the races over there on first base. Every time I get a pitch inside and we're doing live or something, all I can think is my dad saying, turn it, wear it, meet. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Turn it, wear it, meet. We used to do a drill. We had a batting cage in my backyard, you know. And uh, we would go out there and, like, he wouldn't throw it hard or anything, but we had a a drill because you can't like just stand there and take it you got to turn so he would throw softballs at me not hard or anything i was like hey he tossed them at me and i'd have to turn he'd be like wear it me <laughs> now that's just like in my head until the day i take my last oh, breath yeah. oh yeah so full count here are two outs there goes richardson there's ball line drive foul coach Flo trying to play soccer over there and kick it I would love to see that. I really would. <laughs> no. She's one. Would you say turn, wear, what would you say? Turn, wear it, meet. Turn, wear it, meet. There's another foul ball. I know Coach Flores, I think at one time, held the record at OU for the most hit by pitch. I don't know if it still stands or not, but I remember watching softball and they Mentioned her name on that. I was like, I know her. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's fair. She got a hit. Official score. Rules of the hit. Moving Emily to second. Shayla on first. Bringing Jacqueline Gray up to bat. Jacqueline Gray. She's walked twice. And we're going to have a runner. Who are we going to have run here? E.G. Charlie, I think it's A.G. Or, sorry, um, Allison Grove. Yeah, I was going to say A.G. <laughs> yeah. I'm not quite Allison sure. Grove. Uh, number nine, Allison Grove. She is from Winniewood. She is a freshman outfielder. Running for Emily Richardson, second base. I like watching Jack catch behind the plate just because of her hustle. Oh, yeah. Foul ball. It don't matter what. She is 100 miles an hour getting that ball. We're going to have a, a timeout on the coach is going to call a timeout. And I'm, like I said, I'm a baseball guy. So is there a certain amount of number of visits a coach can make in softball? Nope. Nope. Thank you, sir. Carl Albert. We appreciate you. I don't know why I remember this, but I was like eight years old playing up in like a 14 tournament. And uh, we were on a time limit. It was a really big tournament. It was a championship. And this guy would have a pitcher throw one pitch because they were winning and they try to stall. They, they, he would have the pitchers throw one pitch, go back out, change the pitchers every single pitch until the time ran out. I don't know why I remember that. but It's coaching scared. <laughs> yep. Ball outside. Attempted throw down the second. 
Grove back in time. You need this? Yeah, number nine, Allie Grove. Yes. We are in the top of the fourth still. Trojans four, Western one. Runners on second and first with Jacqueline Gray up to bat. Another ball. Two balls, one strike. She's already got two walks. So if she walks here, do you put Sparks back in to hit? My guess would be yes. Two outs. Called strike. Right. Two's on the board. That's got to be a pretty good luxury to have somebody like Spark coming off the bench mm -hmm. to hit. Foul ball. And uh, Sparks is a freshman as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's great that she gets to see it this year. Next year she's going to come back and just be ready. Like, she's, hey, been a big, she's been a pretty big com com uh, contributor yeah. this year. There's another foul ball. I mean. She was the NJCA national, national, not just Region Two, but yeah, national yeah. player of the week. I believe that was the week she had like I don't know, eighteen home runs. Uh, she yes. had five. I know four of them was. Thank you. Good luck. So we have a fly ball, foul ball to right. So we got both lineups for the next game without even asking for it. Man, Rusty's got him to train. So. He's been working for that the whole uh, whole season. Yeah. Seminole was the number one seed, and Western was the number five seed coming in. Swing and miss. Got to score those runs. No runs, two hits, no errors on 33 pitches. Western will send up Parrish, Beavers, and McKee. Welcome back. Pitcher Regan Parrish from Huntington, Texas, coming to the plate. It's 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the four. Trojans up on a two-run home run and then some hits. There's a foul ball. And the Trojans are back to – y'all call that a certain defense? Or is that just – that's just a natural defense when she's pitching? Yeah, I'm just – we're going to call it the alley movement for the now. The alley movement. <laughs> alley, alley lane. Called strike right there, right down the middle. That's probably the the furthest pitch inside that she's had all game. That's the one you want to take the left field. Yeah. Because, I mean, hey, you just put your bat on it right out in front. Yeah. And it's going to go. She's providing the power. It's going to be right off the top of the fence on the dugout. Good hustle by Richardson. Allie's throw 61 pitches. Um, 44 strikes, 73%. On the strikes. Right. We are in the bottom of the fourth. Another, Another foul, foul ball. ball. Beavers on deck for the Pioneers. Parrish. She hit ground ball, reached on the air on, at shortstop. There's a fly ball. Should be an out. Oh. 
She just got to call her off that. Yeah. I mean, that's hard. What are you going to call that? That's a tough play for second base, but Sunny should have called her off or Sunny. E4 is the official score. We are going to go. Now Beavers is coming to the plate. What has she done? Beavers batting in the six hole. She singled on a fly ball to second base. She's going to try for the bunt. Miss there. Swing and miss. Only one to count. No outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Got a little pop-up. Oh. That's good in the way for him. I want to. I want to say that she waited back on it, but I don't know. Give her a hit. I'd give a hit. Took a, it took a, it took a, a spin off on the ground. Single. I almost thought she was going to let that drop intentionally to get a double play. Double play. That's what I thought was yeah. going to happen. Called strike. Nope, nope. That's a, that's that a was ball. close enough to be a strike. But. That was a close strike. So we got two on, no outs here in the bottom of the fourth. McKee up, number eight. Ball. It's She's the DP. She grounded up the pitcher. To end the inning earlier. She swung and missed. That was not a very good looking swing right there. I feel like she kind of regretted it as soon as she started it. Yeah, it was like too much momentum. It's like don't swing, don't swing, but the body just swung. Yeah. That was a nice pitch right there. Called strike three, almost with the play. Side here. <laughs> Bringing up right fielder number two, Alcorn. She grounded at, uh, grounds out to center field. That's when uh, we were playing five infielders. Let's see. Oh, that's going to be a pop up. She makes that catch. Joy with the diving catch. Great play. That's going to bring us to two out to the bottom of the fourth with runners on second and first. Dolby with Dolby. Jolie with a diving catch. Bringing up first base with number 18, Farrell. Gordon Farrell out of Elgin, Oklahoma, freshman. She lined out the shortstop her first time up. Called strike there. If we're talking too much, let us know. <laughs> we like to talk. We can talk to each other by ourselves. I mean, y'all heard me last game, so. There's another strike called. Nope. It looked, it looked like a strike to me. I, I would yeah. If you're Western, I mean, depending on this at bat, two on no outs, you've got to get a run in. Mm -hmm. Foul ball. It's called foul ball. I thought she touched it. So we have one ball, two strikes. We got two outs. I think if you're an opponent of Seminole with alley pitching, your whole objective is to hit the ball right field. Mm -hmm. You know, and Seminole's trying to get in their heads by saying we're giving you left field so that you'll try to pull it. There we go. Ball in play, ground ball, fielder's choice. Rolly over to Romine for the out. Got uh, no runs, one hit, one error on 16 pitches. The Trojans are going to send up Mealy, Doobie, and Romine. We'll be back.
All right. Sonny coming to the plate. We we didn't force Coach Flores' hand to see if she's going to throw spark or hit let sparks hit. First pitch is going to be a ball outside. I am very grateful, though, that these umpires today have been very consistent with their calls. So, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's foul. Has, has uh, Sonny hit a home run this year at all? Has mm. she hit a home run? No? Nah. I, hey, I wish, though. That would be cool for our slappy to, our oh, yeah. slappy, our slapper to get one over. We are one and one with the count, no outs, top of the fifth. And that's going to be a strike right on that outside corner, bringing us to one ball and two strikes. Sonny's a local local resident out of Tecumseh, just right down the road. Sophomore outfielder. That's going to be a base hit to left field. Yep. There's your slapper. There we go. That's how you get it started. Yeah. One base hit at a time. One base hit at a time. It's kind of like playing slow pitch. Get bases loaded and then use one of your home runs to hit it out. Oh, I love slow pitch. <laughs> Getting back to the top of the lineup, Doobie coming to the plate. She plays a little bit everywhere, infield, outfield. Rover, I guess. She flew out to center, grounded into fielder's choice, and was hit by a pitch. She's a, another local from Asher, Oklahoma. Fly ball to center field. That's going to be our first out for the top of the fifth. Frazier with the catch, bringing up Jolly Romine. She's singled on a ground ball, doubled on a line drive, and singled on a ground flip ball. She's three for three. And where is Jolly from again? <laughs> Got to say Julie it. Jolly is from, I don't know. Davis. There you go. It's going to be a foul ball. I'm sorry, I, bet she, I bet you her T-shirt underneath that says Davis, Oklahoma. I Probably. <laughs> hey, if I was playing, I'd have one under that says <laughs> more. I'm from Moore. Ask me where I'm from. Yeah. You got to be proud from where you grew up. Oh, one to count. It's be oh, a strike. Good strike right there. Oh, and two to count. I don't know if anyone asked me about Moore. I could just give you the history for when it started up until this day and everything about it. Yep. Every street, every restaurant. Oh, hit by pitch, and she's. Right on the hand. Yeah, she, she's. Uh, they can hit her funny bone. Mm. So she's got a thousand. Oh, they call it a foul ball. That hit her hand. Looks like they're calling it a foul ball. I never touched. I mean, she just started to go back yeah. to get into her windup, but she never actually started her swing. So that's. Well, not much we can do, so. No. Nope. All right, Jolie, come on. So hey. that would be a foul ball. Anytime something like that happens, though, it's usually a good hit right after, so. Yep. Not trying to jinx it. The ball never lies. One ball, two strikes. Mealy on first with a slap hit to left. All right, we've got a few people joining. Another foul ball. From my hometown. For more? Yep, we got Carly Flowers and uh, Evan Todd. Grew up with them, so. How many people we got watching this show? 36 right 36. now. We were at 44 is the highest. Yeah. Oh, she swung at that one. That was not good. Enough. So she is one or three for four today, bringing up Haley Womack. We started it off with a home run in the first walk and then flew out to first base. And for those of you just uh, joining, we are in the top of the fifth. We got Sunny Neely on first. He's from Bixby, Oklahoma. For a little change up there, it looks like. Trojans are up four to one, and we have uh, how many hits? We Trojans have eight hits, and Pioneers have three. And that's going to be able to pop up the shortstop to end the inning. Can't leave them hanging around. 
So we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. No runs, one hit, no errors on 13 pitches. Western will send up Perry, Frazier, and Ward. Back. Welcome back. Alexis Perry coming to the plate, number 11, third baseman. She ground out the first and flied out to right. She's 0 for 2 today. Allie Lewis is on the mound for the Trojans. Gray behind the plate. Foul ball. Owen won the count. Here in the bottom of the fifth, another foul ball. The winner of this will play at nine. The loser plays at seven, I believe. Yeah, it would be at seven, I believe. It would be a ball, one ball, two strikes. Yeah. A, I thought she missed that. Ball hit to Lewis. Got the out at first. This is really a slow developing play there. For the first out. Center fielder, Justice Frazier. Bringing up center fielder, number nine, Frazier. She struck out swinging and grounded, grounded out to... Our center fielder playing infield. Justice Frazier's from Morris, Oklahoma, sophomore. Another foul ball. Owen to the count. Winner of this tournament punches their ticket to Utah. The Trojans won it last year. Finished in the top four in Utah in JCA World Series. Another foul ball. We've got some really good softball. The elimination game at five. Eliminate. It's going to be. Tonka Wall versus Carl Albert in an elimination game. Elimination, not elimination. And then we'll have the loser of this game. The ball's going to be hit to Romine at second base. For the second out. Uh, the play for the Pioneers, number seven, Rosie Ward. Tonka Wall will play the loser of this game, I believe. Another foul ball. Eastern plays the loser of this game. We don't have a bracket in here. We did have the bracket in here, but oh, okay. Did you answer Bonnie's question? No, I did not see Are it. Are you talking about uh, Seminole, Bonnie? 
Uh, where is our pitcher from? Allie Lewis. Big Allie. She's from Enid, Oklahoma. There's that center fielder making a play, I think. Yep. Taryn Dubler. And that's going to take us to the top of the sixth with Trojans. What? Go ahead. No runs, no hits, no errors on 13 pitches. That's my favorite number. <laughs> um, we'll send up uh, T. Rowe, Pritchett, and Richardson. T. Rowe. T. Rowe. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to change the spelling in Game Changer where it says Rowe. Yeah. Okay. All right. We will be right back to start off the top of the sixth. <laughs> Raleigh coming to the plate, number 14, shortstop. Walk, struck out looking, fly out to center field. Swing and miss. And we are joined by our school president, Miss Reynolds. How are you doing today? Just fine, Kenneth. Great. What about this crowd? Uh, isn't this incredible? Oh, and we my. have Seminole Chamber of Commerce weather we ordered. And <laughs> it's just a beautiful day. And uh, Trojans are doing great. We're real proud of them. Proud of what this program's meant to Seminole and to the college. You got to love the community effort and getting the field ready. I mean, it was something. Um, we we show a video. There's a pop up hit on the infield. Ooh, she made that look dangerous. Perry with the catch for the first out. We show show that video real quick. We took a video. This is what you guys are seeing right here. That's what it looked like on Wednesday. It almost looks like you could go fishing, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it was like a pond. Yeah. For squeegeeing water with the tennis court brushes. And, oh, there's a line drive. One hops the fence. Karen yes. Pritchett with the double. The parents, and coaches from other teams, community people, members of our booster club all showed up in force yesterday and just, well, they had to do it a couple times this week, but yesterday was really impressive. Yep. Even the Seminole Fire Department and the Mod Fire Department sent big commercial blowers over and uh, helped us out, but it's really been a lot of, of group effort. It's good that a community comes together like that to support the college and to support our, the, the youth, or not youth, but the, the ladies that we have that are representing our community. And a tournament like this means a lot to a community and economic development and traffic coming through. Yeah, you can't find a parking spot around. She's no. hit by a pitch. That parking lot is completely full. So, and then we have our project that we're working on. Yes, the Brian Crawford Memorial the Stadium. Yes. Dear to my heart. Yes, <laughs> dear to all of our hearts. Um, we're hoping that we can move forward with that quickly. We've got the land purchased through our foundation and I'm ready to get moving on that project and ready. host many tournaments host like this. Host many tournaments. It would be nice. It's like I was talking to some people. It would be nice for uh, Region 2 to make a commitment for a long-term facility so that community involvement or dollars could be raised to put back into, like, you know, not necessarily here, but at a school where they could put turf down and, Absolutely. And uh, have that where you don't have to worry about delays or, you know, when the game is scheduled, it's going to get played and all the local high schools can play. And, I mean, it's just it's a big, big impact on the community. It certainly is. Oh, it's great having uh, all these 
parents here that are, feel so connected to the college, people from all over uh, the state and beyond um, that consider Seminole home. What number are you looking for? The, uh, you can just go and look and see in the hospitality room. I mean, it's like a bakery in there. Yes. <laughs> With all the parrots, everybody bringing everything in. Yes. I mean, it's Faculty just really good. staff at the college all chipped in. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, just, it's been really touching to see everybody's uh, efforts coming out and taking their shoes off and getting on the, the tarp and helping and running errands and I thought uh, was, working the gate. I thought was what was really impressive, too, is, is that uh, our booster club – had the drone out the other day, and we had coverage overall. Oh, it's listed on a, on the SSAathletics.com, but you can see the area photo of or uh, video coverage. Really impressive footage that was shot by uh, Dylan Robinson. Yes, he's a local realtor, and he had the drone and did all of that for us. He serves as president of the Booster Club, and it was on the morning of graduation when we had. A lot of people on campus for that event too so how many students did we graduate uh, i'm not sure how many actually graduated but as far as walks through the ceremony we were around 190 190 uh, so it was an exciting good day it's got to be a proud moment for yeah. president it's a proud moment for everybody i tell you the students the parents a lot of them have children um, just take a lot of pride in that ceremony and that's followed by our nursing pinning ceremony well, that's that's really good and, uh, a lot of people achieving their goals with a lot of help from our faculty and staff. Well, we're we're excited about bringing the live stream, so people that can't make it, we've had a lot of people from uh, long distance away, out of out of the states and everything that were, yeah, I'm not even paying attention to that. Too busy. <laughs> and it it is a great service. Appreciate you providing that. Um, I've been on the other end of that where I had a schedule that didn't allow me to attend a playoff game and got to watch it live stream, so that's really exciting. We have a lot of – it's Mother's Day, too. I mean, lot, lots of families get plans, and we had a graduation ceremony this afternoon. That's where I had to take off to Dale. So, um, But we love doing it. It, yeah. it really brings a lot to the community, and, and we're pretty proud to be a part of it. We've just got a lot of, lot of folks here that um, – care a lot about these girls and about the school and want to see them do well. So yeah. We've had presidents from other institutions I've seen here today, and they've all been very complimentary of the tournament and the way everything's being run. So kudos to everyone. Well, yeah. well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I come from a background of public relations, and I really understand the value of, of college sports, particularly teams that do so well what attention that brings to your institution and, and how you're helping change lives for students that might not have otherwise had, otherwise had that opportunity. So that might drop for a hit. It's going to. All right. We're going to score Probably some not to clap in here. No, right? no, no, no. <laughs> hey, it's the Seminole live stream, yeah, so hey, we can clap. <laughs> well, we're loaded we're, those bases, so we're ready for some big action. Yeah. Time for some runs. Time for some runs. We need to put this game away. So anyway, we appreciate yeah. you stopping well, by. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. I know you got to go. Thank you, Kenneth, for, for doing this. Okay. Appreciate it. Well. All right, I'll give you back. Thank you. All right, we'll get back here. Sunny Mealy's coming to the plate for the Trojans. Base is loaded. She slaps it to left field. Is it going to stand? No, oh, it's just a little bit foul. And we appreciate President Reynolds coming by and visiting with us. Um, she always does a great job for the college and. Uh, Really supports the, our athletic programs. It all starts with her and the, and the community, like she said. Oh, yeah. So we got bases loaded. Pritchett at third, Richardson at second, ball outside. No, She's uh, going to throw that away. Pritchett's hit. Really got, had it all going, you know. I and mean, I was trying to started. multitask here. Oh, and yeah, I couldn't I really do it. and So I apologize on the, on the game changer. I'm pretty sure we got it right. Let's see. Let change the score here. And uh, we had Shelly Tomlinson Moore. She said, we do they play again today. Um, if you are talking, whoever the winner of this game uh, results in, that team will play against, who is it, Connors? Or no, it's not no. Connors. It's, uh, the winner of this game? Yes. Plays NEO. NEO at 9 o'clock tonight. So uh, you can stay tuned for that or you can come out and and I've Watch messed it up somehow. Out. We're supposed to be five. I've messed something up. So it's going to be. She's going to be safe. There we go. That's going to score another. Oh, yeah. That's a hit. 
which she hit it to, ground ball, single, short. All right, we got our lead off up to bat. Taryn Dubler. I gotta figure out how to override. I'm gonna make that. If you are also watching our game changer, uh, it should be six. And there was a line drive hit to right field. That's, that's good. She missed it. That's gonna score two at least. That might score three. Sunny's run. She ain't got no. She gotta go. Sunny's on here still. Uh. Okay, so who was that that hit that? De De uh, Doobie? Yes. Ball Over three. right field's head. Fly ball. So that's going to bring us to two outs. And what are we at? Seven runs? Yeah. We have seven runs. Seminole to seven, and Western has one run. We got two outs, top of the six. Two outs, top of the six, and it's seven to one. I've missed a run somehow, some way, but we'll get by with it. And, uh, Roman. Western is actually home, so two more. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. If Six more outs. To score oh, two yeah. more runs, uh, Western will get to hit last, but if they fail to score, then that would be a run roll. So we got two strikes. Not two balls, my apologies. Swing and miss. Oh, uh, well that was for the third out. Mm -hmm. So I need to make a seven. Other, that's going to make a seven, and then we're going to get a swing and miss. All right. So we are headed into the bottom of the sixth. We have seven to one. Trojans leading ahead by six. And we will get right back after uh, this short break. Welcome back. Coming to the plate, shortstop number four, Alvarado. She walked and she flew out to second base. It's going to be a ball high. We need to miss, or miss, we need to wish all the moms out there happy Mother's Day. And what better way to celebrate Mother's Day than at the ballpark? That's where my mom's always grown up. Ali Luce back still in the mound. Ball hit over to Richardson with the first out. Bringing up Parrish, pitcher number 33. She hit, hit into a ground ball, reached on the air, and hit a fly ball, reached on the air. She's 0 for 2, but she's got a pretty good on base percentage, I guess. That's going to be outside. All right, number 33, Reagan Parrish. If you're just now joining us, I'm going to go ahead and read off where she's from. She is a sophomore, a pitcher and a utility from Huntington, Texas. Cold strike. Just so everybody knows what we got in the game, we've got uh, all region teams, uh, Alvarado for Western, 
And let's see here. I know we got another one in here. It's going to be ball number two. Rosie Ward for Western. Both those team, both those players recognize as all-region team. And then we had uh, uh, Raleigh, Romine, Harper, Dubie, Dubler, and Womack all – and uh, Jacqueline Gray and Miss Edding. Yep. It's going to be ball four. So the Seminole Trojans well represented on the all-region team. You know, we're getting a lot of thanks in the comments for the uh, live feed and everything. And, you know, um, we're doing it because of y'all. So, um, and for the pizza. Somebody's got to send us a yeah, Supreme pizza. From Pizza Hut, they'll deliver. <laughs> kind of compliments of the press box. Mm -hmm. Just just send it to the press box. Pepperoni, you know. But uh, thank you guys for the recognition for that. I know uh, I enjoy it. I know Kenneth is really thankful for that. Oh yeah. So. I I I was never really a I was I'm a baseball guy. Three boys baseball. <laughs> yeah. Never watched much softball, but I really enjoy watching softball. Watching the. The Trojans play softball. I even find myself watching it on TV. Beaver's up to the plate. She's single on fly ball to second and single on fly ball to first base. She's got them lumberjack batting gloves on. She come, she's going to come to work. Ball outside. 2-0 the count. We've got Carl Albert and uh, Tonkwall coming up next. We'll stop this feed and start another one. It's going to be foul out of play. She stepped out when she swung at that. Mm -hmm. And if you missed any of the other games from day one, you can go to region2athletics.com. Uh, the rotating banner to have a highlight of each particular game, and there's a link on there with our YouTube. I uploaded that so you can watch the, the game um, that way. And that's going to be foul ball number two for two strikes. We got a two and two count here. I seen where teams are punching their ticket for St. George. Uh, Indian Hills has punched their ticket yesterday. Is what they were showing. Balls hit back up the middle, just out of the outreach of Raleigh. I mean, uh, Romine. You're going to get a ball in play, ground ball. Single to second. And that's going to bring up number eight, Kimberly McKee. And Kimberly is a freshman. She is her position. She's a pitcher. She's from Altus, Oklahoma. Grinded out to the pitcher and struck out looking. There's another foul ball. Man, they have hit a ton of foul balls. Allie working hard on the mound. close. Yeah, one and one to count. The Trojans got seven runs, 12 hits on two errors. It's kind of unheard of for Trojans making errors. Mm -hmm. Pioneers got one run on four hits, no errors. That's going to be a ball, fielder's choice. Double play. There we go. And that's going to make out to three outs. And we are going to go into the top of the seventh. Top of the seventh. We got uh, no runs, one hit, no error on 16 pitches. Number one team in the country. Trojans send up Womack. Rally. Did I say it right? Rally. 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 And Pritchett. I'm overthinking Pritchett. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm overthinking it. I'm not making fun of her, I promise. Yeah. But I just I get it wrong every time. So we'll be back here in a minute.
Womack coming to the plate. She homered, walked, flied out, flied out. Got a foul ball for that first one. And power down low is gone. And what? So we got one and one to count here in the top of the seventh. That's good news. All right, looks like we got a little hit to left field. Drops right in between. Putting Womack on first. That's going to bring Taylor Rowley up to bat. Just a second, guys. A little malfunction. Hmm. So we're going to have a bunt. Move Womack to second. Right, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep you all updated on the score, but as of right now, our little scoreboard is having some problems. So I promise I'll keep you all updated. Score right now. It's the top of the seventh. Seven to one. Trojans leading by six. We got one out. Karen Pritchett up to bat. That's going to be a ball outside with an attempted throw down to second. Better than nothing there. Yep. Anyway, I started messing with it. So we got uh, Womack at, at second. One out, one ball, one strike. That's a little squirmer hit. Back to the pitcher. That's going to move Womack to third. Parrish making the play, bringing up Emily Richardson. Emily single, flat out. Single and hit by pitch. If I open this up, is it going to open what up? Maximize it. I don't know what it's going to do. One ball, no strikes. We got Harper on deck. It's going to be a ball. Two and over the count. This yeah. might be the warmest day of the year for softball. Hopefully nobody passes out. <laughs> no. There's going to be a bay. No, she snags yeah. that up. Oh. All right, we're going to go to the bottom of the seventh. Ball in play, ground ball out at first. Perry with the play. Get uh, no runs, one hit on eight pitches. Western will send up Alcorn, Farrell, and Perry. We'll be right back. Alcorn's coming to the plate, right fielder. She grounded out to center and flat out to second. She's over two. Uh, defensively, Ali Lewis is still on the mound for the Trojans. She's throwed 103 pitches through six. Going to be ball high. Get. Uh, I don't have any 
board behind the play. We have Gray. It's going to be a ball outside for ball number two. <laughs> yeah, Richardson at first, Romine at second, Rowley at short, Harper at third. Uh, Pritchett in center, I think. Mealy in right, and Duber playing flex rover something, something on the <laughs> infield. Two balls, one strike, another foul ball. And uh, this that, is – Go ahead. Sorry. This is the bottom of the seventh, so if Western does not score to get eight, uh, this will be ball game. Oh. If she comes up throwing. She turned on that one. Yeah. That's a double. Allie's got a smile on her face. I can't believe she pulled that on me. Can't believe she, she didn't hit her spot. Got to hit your spot. But she's laughing. She's smiling. You really got to like that having some fun out there. Yeah, I mean, Fair. things are going to happen. Yeah. So. Farrell coming to the plate. Runner does not advance. Safe. Six. E six. Alcorn stayed at second. Back to the top of the lineup. Infield meeting here. Little infield uh, conference without the coach. There's some leadership out there for you. Hey, let's hit the reset button. It's okay. We got we got a six run lead. The tying run is still sitting in the in the dugout. So Perry's coming to the plate. Grounded out to first, flight out to right, and grounded out. She's over three. There's going to be a four-three double play. You know, at this point. Uh, Two outs, they just need one more. I know what they're thinking on the field. They're just saying, you know what, don't even worry about that runner on third. We just got to get one more out. Just got to get one more out. But they want that. They, there's a lot of pride out there. They don't want it to go more than one up there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's going to be a foul ball to Frazier, number nine, center fielder. Frazier struck out swinging, grounded, to, grounded out. Second, center field, one of those two. Depending on where she was playing and grounded out to second. 0 oh, and 1 to count. Ch if it says a center, that means it was newbie. Okay. So she's gone about second each time. Swing and miss. Look like she took a little something off that one. Trojans have seven runs, 13 hits, three errors, which is un Trojan esque. Mm -hmm. This could be it, though. Western's got one run on five hits. Ooh, give it to her. We'll stay on just a little bit. I'll give the box score stats. Line drive out to Richardson for the for the win. Line drive for the ball game. So the Trojans are going to advance to the winner's bracket game at 9 o'clock. Let's close this one out. No runs, one hit, one error, 11 pitches. And that's going to be the ball game. Uh... Lewis with the win. Paris with the loss. And I'll give the box score here as soon as this clears up. But so we're going to have a 9 o'clock game tonight. It's going to be nice weather out. Everybody needs to come out if you're local. Box score. Okay, so we had for the Trojans, uh, Doobie had four at bats, no runs, one hit, one RBI. Romine, five at bats. Romine had five at bats, one run, three hits, two strikeouts. Womack, four at bats, one run, two hits, two RBIs, one base on ball. T Row, three at bats, one run, 
No hits, no RBIs, one base on ball, one strikeout. Emily Richardson, four at bats, one run, two hits. Harper, three at bats, one run, one hit, one base on ball. Jacqueline Gray, one at bat, one RBI, two base on balls, one strikeout. McCord, one at bat. Sparks got an RBI and a walk. Bases loaded. And Mealy, three at bats, two hits, one RBI, one strikeout. Uh, Romine, Pritchett, and Dubler with doubles. Womack with a home run. Three errors, we won't go over that. And pitching, seven innings for Allie Lewis. Five hits, one run, none, no earned runs. Two base on balls and three strikeouts. You know, you can see with our hitting that, like, it's not, you know, just triples, triples, or everyone's doubles. It's, you know, singles, and just everyone's hitting, yeah. getting everyone in. So yeah. that's key to this. So. so we'll be back here shortly with the next game. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. We're, we'll, we'll see you here in just 